Okay, in the second question, um, we encounter uh, a skeleton of a man. Uh, where we've been sent uh, a sample of this skeleton, uh, and we have to uh, work out how old it is. And so uh, let's go through which bits are going to help us with that in the question. Okay, uh, we're sent 10 grams of this sample. So 10 grams of something like this, maybe somebody drilled in here and took a little bit of something out, sent it off to a lab. Uh, we find that uh, 10 grams of this material has a, an activity of 8 counts per minute. So remember, that's about 8 uh, bits of radiation um, every 60 seconds on average. Uh, so 10 grams of this has uh, an activity of 8 if it's alive. So somebody alive today, okay, uh, 10 grams would have the same activity as 8 counts per minute. Uh, unfortunately, this person has been dead so long that the uh, when we test it, um, the reading that we get is uh, 1 gram. So 10 grams of the, uh, the dead skeleton, okay, that has an activity of 1 count per minute. And it just wants us to know how old is the skeleton. Okay, so we're just going to go through this uh, and figure out how much that is. And there's a couple of ways we can use the graph over here, uh, which, if we remember from last time, has a horizontal axis in thousands of years, and the vertical axis is in percent, which just is uh, the amount of radioactive material, uh, radioactive isotope carbon-14 that's still left inside the skeleton. So there's a couple of ways we can we, we can approach this, and we'll look at both of them now. Uh, the first way is uh, we can figure out the percentage of radioactive carbon-14. Okay, so what's the percentage of this? Okay, let's, we can work that out very simply. Uh, compared to 10 grams of a living sample, which would be 8 counts per minute, okay, our sample has 1 count per minute. And that's our fraction. We times it by 100 to get a percentage okay, and reach for our calculator. Um, and our calculator is on hand, and uh, we can work that out. Okay, let's clear that. Uh, 1 divided by 8 times 100 uh, to get as our percentage, 12 and a half percent. Okay, good, 12 and a half percent. Okay, and now what we have to do is just come down uh, from 100 percent when something is. Uh, last alive. As soon as it dies, the amount of radioactive carbon-14 drops. So we come right down to that's 15. Say let's say about here, okay, and that's where we're going to read across. It's about 12 and a half percent until it hits the half-life graph, uh, the decay curve rather, uh, and then we can come down and and have a look there. Uh, and there we go. And that's we can see that's uh, 16. That's 20. This is 18, so maybe a little bit more than 16,000 years. So we can use the graph, okay, and using that sort of curve, we can uh, get an idea that it's about 16,000 years old. There's another way we can do that as well, though. We can also have a look just by having a look at uh, these numbers here, okay? So we could look at these numbers and figure out how many half-lives have passed. And uh, that's what I'm going to do now. So the second way of doing it, we could just say, well, the last time this person uh, was alive, they had eight counts per minute of radioactivity. Now, one half-life later, okay, a half-life later, uh, that will go down to four counts per minute. And in another half-life, uh, it will go down by half again, down to two counts per minute. And also, uh, this can come down to one count per minute after another half-life has passed. Making in total one, two, three half-lives. Now, we know that uh, three half-lives, um, well, we, we can easily figure that out, uh, because... Three half-lives is uh, just three times 
5,700. Remember, in our first question on this paper, we learned that the half-life of carbon-14 is about 5,700 years. So we can get an easy fix, 3 times 5,700 years. And that gives us um, a number that's pretty similar to what we read from the graph, and it should be. OK, so 3 times 5,700. So that gives us about 17,000 years. OK, so 17,100 years. And that's how old the skeleton is.